If I want to learn Splunk and get a job as a sim engineer, how should I go about doing that? You you may answer that question or yeah, well, this is one of your yeah, questions. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so depends like what your timeline is, honestly. So if your goal is to become a sim engineer, I would first ask you like, what is your current role? What are th- what are some things you're doing right? Um, are you willing to move right? Because honestly, if you live like in middle of Wyoming, there probably aren't much Splunk engineering jobs, if realistically speaking, right? Um, so you may have to move uh, from that point of view. If you're willing to move, right, you don't care, you're young, in your 20s, right, awesome. First thing I would probably understand is how data works and how data moves from that point of view, right? Understand Linux command line, OS, understand Windows backend as well. reason I, I tell people that is those are the most common use cases in logs to get ingested inside of any sim platform, honestly, especially Splunk. If you don't understand how Linux works in the back end or Windows, it's very hard to be able to parse logs, data ingest. And especially when you do security, you're going to be ingesting those logs for security use cases. It's hard to break those apart, right, for security investigations. That's the first thing. Now, if you want to specialize more on the security side, I would then tell you probably try to set up like a detection as code lab. That's more advanced, but that is one of the paths you can take. So that's going to help teach you how to use you get, how to use cloud servers, Right, maybe how do you terraform Ansible as well, which is what a lot of jobs are asking nowadays. It's what my clients want, so that's why I had to learn it. Um, those are a couple of paths you can take, like timeline length, um, maybe two to three years overall to get towards your end goal of being a Splunk engineer. How much, how much does it make? Enough on other questions as well. It just depends, right, on location. Uh, for example, if you live like in NYC or San Francisco, you're gonna make a lot more money compared to if you live like I don't know, like in Kansas or like compared to here, yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, top end, I've seen mic ranges of, like, well, probably 140 to, like, 300K if you're really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, again, that varies in location experience. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do have a question I wanted to ask in regards to uh, a beginner wanted to learn how yeah. to use Splunk. Yeah. Um, would you th- do you think that they should learn from uh, a search head experience or the Splunk architect from the higher level on down? <laughs> I'm not a Splunk <laughs> engineer or architect, but I'll say from bottom up. Okay. If, yeah. if I compare it to anything in real life, we, we compare it to what we call it, foundational skills. Yes. Like uh, before a kid can go out and shoot like Steph Curry, they need to learn how to dribble. dribble. Yeah. That's true. Um, learn how to pass. Yeah. You that's know, true. You need to how to do a layup on the right hand and left hand, like simple stuff that's fundamentals that'll take you anywhere. Yeah. So whatever your – fundamental stuff is about Splunk, I think you should know that because if all things fail, you know how to work from that and not how, I guess I uh, compare it to like we have a lot of people who got into the industry over the last five years and they skipped a lot of steps because of luckily like the barrier entry was so low, they're just hiring people. You get a job, you get a job, you get a job. (laughs) But some of those people are struggling now because they skipped steps. They skipped uh, having like a basic understanding of networking or understanding the cloud or even understanding basics about security. Right data security, all those different things. So they skipped a lot of that stuff, and now some of them are in trouble because they got to go relearn it. Yeah. So, okay, I would probably say then, starting the search at level, probably the easiest win, and that's important back a mental um, per standpoint, the people don't get upset and just quit, which happens pretty often. Um, from there, after you get a de- decent baseline of that, I would say probably go in the back end to understand how Linux works. If you want to be a smoke engineer or any same engineer, honestly, you have to know how Linux works. Yes. So those are what every platform is built on for security in most cases. So again, no, you can go on Code Academy Learner for like probably under hundred dollars. No, to install servers, no, to set them up from scratch, tear them down, break them apart, do it over again twenty times, which is what I did, and document your process. I'm glad you said that. Yes, I had a, I did, I didn't put it on LinkedIn yet. I probably either make it a newsletter or a LinkedIn post. But I did put it on Twitter, and let me see, I actually can pull it up. By the way, guys, if you're not following me on Twitter, you need to follow me. Like, Markeisha went, like, kind of, like, viral this weekend. Oh, yeah. The same, that, that post, but it was, a, you know, the other post I made when I said um, why people are struggling in interviewing with, like, no experience? Or a post you made about you, you better slap that guy across the face. Nah, you- we talked about that last episode. <laughs> but that's crazy. My Hit the Ground Running tweet got, like, 717 likes and 68 retweets. But Marquisha's initial tweet got 2.6K likes and 122 retweets. Uh, what does it say? She was talking about I'm generally interviewing for roles that pay 195K to 310K. When you're at that level, you have to know your shit. And I said, and you have to hit the ground running. All that the company going to train you is hogwash. Because all, all the grifters, 
Some of the, hey, you can do all this. They're going to train you. And I'm like, bro, I can tell I've worked some contract jobs. And like only one day they say, oh, these are the links for everything. And this is what we do. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't. If you can't do the work, they're going, hey, man, he ain't working. We need somebody else ASAP. Give yeah. us Kennedy B. Like, no. <laughs> well, here you go. I said, while I'm here, most of you who are trying to get into cybersecurity don't understand your projects on a foundational level and how to explain them for real-world scenario-based interview questions. And this did come from – this is the whole reason why I was telling you all what I thought about doing about consultations. There's an interview pair session. He already has an IT slash security internship he's doing with a um, – Healthcare company, but he doesn't really understand what he's doing. I'm when I'm when I use Chat GPT. Well, no, actually, I use Copilot. I'm sorry to analyze the job description. I said pull out me ten GRC type of questions or whatever. So I did that, and as I'm asking him the questions, he's like, mm, "I don't know." I said, "But you got right here. You did this. This is the same thing." So they're not understanding how they translate. Mm-hmm. And he did the cyber race stuff with Josh Madikor, which is excellent stuff. But I could tell he only did it maybe once, maybe twice. Because when I'm saying, okay, well, y'all found these findings, what kind of findings did you find and how did you fix them? Not, we found these findings and we did this and we fixed it. That ain't good enough. Mm-hmm. When you didn't say, oh, we found that, you know, we didn't have a firewall or uh, these user accounts had um, bad, what is it called? Like, not password health, but it's like complexity, like the status of like, your passwords and, like, how often they change and stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. when you did an audit, like, you didn't find this stuff and, like, change it, and that's how you implemented it, and we did it with this, and now we're working with pass keys and password lists. Like, y'all can't go deep enough on these things, and that's why y'all struggling. Yeah. Because y'all really are not understanding them. And then, so that's why I think the pro about the self-paced stuff is good, but having a person that you can literally just access that's been in enterprise environments 5, 7, 10, 15, 20 years, that's the best cheat code you're going to have. 